you're out there. You're listening. You're afraid. You're afraid of us. You're afraid of change. I don't have a crystal ball. I can't see the future. I'm not here to tell you how this is going to end. I'm here to tell you how this is going to begin. I'm going to start this broadcast, and when I do, I'm going to show these people what you don't want them to see. A world without controls and boundaries. A world where anything is possible. Hi, I'm Fox San Antonio's Jessica Headley. And I'm Ryan Wolf. Our, our greatest, greatest responsibility, responsibility is, is to serve, serve our, our Treasure Valley communities. The El Paso Las Cruces communities. Eastern Iowa communities. Mid-Michigan communities. We are extremely proud of the quality, balanced journalism that CBS4 News produces. But we are concerned about the one plaguing our country. Plaguing our country. The sharing of biased and false news has become all too common on social media. More alarming, some media outlets publish these same fake stories without checking facts first. The sharing of biased and false, false news has, has become, become all too common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media outlets publish these same fake stories without checking facts first. Unfortunately, some members of the media use their platforms to push their own personal bias and agenda to control the truth. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. 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 In this report, I will show you just how dangerous the mainstream media is to our democracy. In the early 1980s, roughly 50 different companies owned 90% of American media. By 1992, that number had dropped to less than two dozen. And in recent years, that same 90% has fallen to just six major conglomerates. Although various mergers and layers of external control make this an inexact number, most of the big six hold interests in film production, cable and broadcast television, news, sports, music, and online streaming. So who exactly controls the media? As of 2015, the largest media company in the world by revenue is Comcast. According to the SEC, in 2014, they reportedly made nearly $69 billion. Like the other conglomerates, Comcast owns nearly every step in media production and distribution. In fact, Comcast is the single largest cable provider on Earth. Content is created through subsidiaries like NBC Universal, which is then broadcast over TV and the internet through Xfinity. Comcast is also a major internet service provider, covering more than half of all US broadband customers. Even online streaming giant Hulu is jointly owned by three of the big six. The next largest conglomerate is the Walt Disney Company, with reportedly roughly $48 billion in revenue. Disney has holdings in theme parks, movie studios, and diverse television networks such as ABC, A&E, and ESPN. They also own a number of legacy companies like Pixar, Marvel Entertainment, and Lucasfilms of the Star Wars franchise. The third of the big six is 21st Century Fox, which emerged in 2013 as a spin-off of Rupert Murdoch's News Corporation. Today, Fox makes about $32 billion a year and is predominantly focused on film and television, including Fox News Channel, which made nearly $800 million in ad revenue in 2014. The last independent conglomerate is Time Warner, with revenues of about $27 billion. In the 1990s, they were the largest media company in the world, but an unsuccessful merger with AOL at the peak of the dot-com bubble made them lose nearly $100 billion in 2002. Since then, AOL and Time Inc., as well as Time Warner's entire cable division, have become separate companies. Because they are now unrelated, Time Warner and Time Warner Cable are the fourth and fifth largest media companies in the world, according to Forbes. Finally, the last two are CBS and Viacom. In 2013, they reported about $14 to $15 billion in revenue each. They used to be a single company controlled by National Amusements, a movie theater chain. Today, although they are individually held, National Amusements owners have enough stock in both to effectively dictate control. So in a way, there aren't even six conglomerates, but five. 
Knowledge that only six corporations control 90% of the mainstream media make it obvious that choice in media is an illusion. What is less obvious is how interwoven the corporate mainstream media is with the government of the United States of America and the deep state. Over the course of this report, we are going to review the mainstream media's participation in the Council on Foreign Relations, which is a think tank that focuses on American foreign affairs, the Bilderberg Group, which is a group that meets in secret, consisting of governors from all over the world, as well as corporate titans from all over the world, and the Trilateral Commission, a think tank consisting of people from North America, Western Europe, and Japan, consisting of prominent business leaders and academics around the world. This is a chart showing Council on Foreign Relation membership throughout the United States government and American society as a whole. Presidents and vice presidents include George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, George H. W. Bush, Jimmy Carter, Gerald Ford, Richard Nixon, Dwight D. Eisenhower, and Herbert Hoover. Vice presidents include Richard Cheney, George H. W. Bush, Walter Mondale, Nelson Rockefeller, Gerald Ford, Hubert Humphrey, Richard Nixon, and Charles Dawes. Secretaries of State include John Kerry, Hillary Clinton, Condoleezza Rice, Colin Powell, Madeleine Albright, Warren Christopher, and so on. Secretaries of Defense, Ashton Carter, Chuck Hagel, Robert Gates, Donald Rumsfeld, William Cohen, and people dating all the way back to 1940. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Michael Mullen, Richard Myers, Hugh Shelton, dating back to 1960. Commander, U.S. Central Command, Lloyd Austin, John Allen, David Petraeus, dating all the way back to 1983. Supreme Allied Commanders of Europe, dating all the way back to Dwight D. Eisenhower. National Security Advisors, H.R. McMaster, Susan Rice, dating all the way back to 1955. Members of Congress, including John McCain and Dianne Feinstein. Secretaries of Treasury, including Jacob Liu, Timothy Geithner, Henry Paulsom, Lawrence Summers, dating all the way back to Andrew Mellum in 1921. Federal Reserve Chairman, Janet Yellen, Alan Greenspan, Paul Volcker, William Miller, dating all the way back to Paul Warburg, the co-founder of the Federal Reserve System. Directors of the CIA, dating all the way back to 1942 with William Donovan of the OSS. David Petraeus, Michael Hayden, George Tenet, you name it. Hollywood Studios, Disney, Universal, 20th Century Fox, Paramount, Sony Pictures, Time Warner, even actors and actresses, Angelina Jolie, George Clooney, Warren Beatty, Ron Silver, Michael Douglas, Shirley Temple, media and journalists. Oh, don't worry, we'll get to them in a second. University presidents all over the country. People who claim to be academics. Ambassadors to the United Nations, Susan Rice, John Bolton, dating back to 1946. Presidents of the World Bank, dating back to 1946. Directors of the National Economic Council. Business and Finance. Wall Street. Look at David Rockefeller right there at the top. He was the honorary chairman of the Council on Foreign Relations from 1970 to 1985. Peter Peterson, George Soros, David Rubenstein, a who's who of business titans. Big corporations, Bank of America, Boeing, Booz Allen Hamilton, Chevron, Citi, Exxon, Goldman Sachs, Google, Hess, J.P. Morgan, Chase, Moody's, Morgan Stanley, NASDAQ, Pepsi-Cola, Thomas Reuters, United Technologies, just to name a few. Non-governmental organizations. Think tanks within the think tank that is the CFR. Atlantic Council, Center for American Progress, Project for the New American Century. Yeah, we've seen that one. Brookings Institute, Rand Corporation, Center for Strategic and International Studies, the Aspen Institute, 
And of course, the fine people that brought us the Warren Commission and the 9-11 Commission. Simply put, Democratic or Republican, the Council on Foreign Relations is the kingmaker when it comes to politics in the United States of America. So how is it that you don't routinely hear about it in the corporate mainstream media? This is a chart that shows past and present members of the media's affiliation or membership with the Council on Foreign Relations, Bilderberg Group, and Trilateral Commission. Mortimer Zuckerman is a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, Bilderberg Group, and Trilateral Commission. He is the owner and publisher of U.S. News and World Report and formerly owned the Daily News, Atlantic, and Fast Company. Jacob Weisberg is a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. He served as the editor of Slate Magazine for six years. Katrina Vandal Hunvo, a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, is the part owner of the progressive magazine, The Nation. James Fulton Hogg Jr. is a member of the Council on Foreign Relations and Bilderberg Group. He was the editor of Foreign Affairs. Gideon Rose, Council on Foreign Relations, is the current editor of Foreign Affairs. Moises Naim, is a member of the Council on Foreign Relations and Bilderberg Group and served as the Editor-in-Chief of Foreign Policy. Jacob E. Halbram, Council on Foreign Relations, is the current editor of The National Interest. And Yashahiro Francis Fukima co-founded The American Interest in 2005. Martin Wolf, the Chief Economic Commentator at Financial Times, and Gideon Rackman, the chief foreign affairs commentator at the Financial Times, are both Bilderberg attendees. Stephen Adler, Council on Foreign Relations, is the president and editor-in-chief of Reuters. Tom Glosser, Reuters employee, is a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. Harold Matthew Evans, Council on Foreign Relations, is the editor-at-large of Reuters. David Schlesinger, Council on Foreign Relations, is the former chairman of Reuters. Robert Albritton, whose father was a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, co-founded Capital News Company, the parent company of the website Politico, and Garrett Graff, Council on Foreign Relations, is the former editor of Politico. Michael Bloomberg is the founder and CEO of Bloomberg. He has an estimated net worth of $50.8 billion and is a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. Richard Micklewaite is a Bilderberg attendee and editor-in-chief of Bloomberg News. Matthew Winkler, member of the Council on Foreign Relations, is a co-founder and former editor of Bloomberg. Daniel Lewis Doktroff, a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, was previously the CEO and president of Bloomberg. Randall Lane, Council on Foreign Relations, is the chief content officer at Forbes Media and editor of Forbes Magazine. Doyle McManus, Council on Foreign Relations, is a columnist for the Los Angeles Times, and Charles Shelby Coffey III was the editor and executive vice president of the LA Times. He's a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. Rupert Murdoch is a member of the Council on Foreign Relations and the Bilderberg Group. He is the owner of The Sun, The Times, News Corporation, 20th Century Fox, The Wall Street Journal, and Sky. He has an estimated net worth of over $5 billion. Maria Bartiromo, Heather Newart, Tris Regan, and Linda Vester all work for Murdoch and are CFR members. Dan Selter is a CFR senior fellow. Peter Kahn is a member of the Council on Foreign Relations and Bilderberg Group. He was named publisher of the Wall Street Journal in 1988. Karen Elliott House is a member of the Council on Foreign Relations and Trilateral Commission. She is the former managing editor of the Wall Street Journal and its parent company Dow Jones. Lewis Gordon Kravitz, Council on Foreign Relations, is the former publisher of the Wall Street Journal who also served as executive vice president of Dow Jones. Robert Leroy Bartley, was a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, Bilderberg Group, and Trilateral Commission. He was the editor of the editorial page of the Wall Street Journal for more than 30 years. Paul A. Giggett, Alan Murray, Daniel Henniger, 
Gerald Sieb, Peggy Nguyen, and Paul Steger are all members of the Council on Foreign Relations. Giggett and Steger are also Bilderberg attendees. Pamela Thomas Graham is a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. She was the president and CEO of CNBC. Cesar Conde, Council on Foreign Relations, is currently serving as chairman of NBC Universal, International Group, and NBC Universal Telemundo. Stephen Capus, Council on Foreign Relations, is an executive editor at CBS News and former president of NBC News. Tom Brokaw, Mika Prasinski, Andrea Mitchell, Richard Engel, Brian Williams, Joe Scarborough, Biana Vitalana Golodraga, and Ayman Moyeldin are all members of the Council on Foreign Relations. Broca is a CFR director, and Andrea Mitchell also attends Bilderberg and the Trilateral Commission. Lynn Foster de Rothschild is a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. She is the chief executive officer of E.L. Rothschild and owner of The Economist magazine. John Elkin, Council on Foreign Relations and Bilderberg, is a board member of The Economist Group. Susan Beddoes, Trilateral Commission and Bilderberg Group, is Editor-in-Chief of The Economist. Rupert Pennett Ray, Council on Foreign Relations and Bilderberg Group, is the former Deputy Governor of the Bank of England and is currently the Chairman of The Economist Group. Vandeline Van Brado and Adrian Waldridge both attend Bilderberg. Bill Elliott, the Trilateral Commission, and Megan McArdle, the CFR, all work for The Economist. Norman Perlstein is a member of the Council on Foreign Relations and the Bilderberg Group and served as the Chief Operating Officer at Time Magazine. Michael Duffy, Council on Foreign Relations, worked as the Deputy Managing Editor at Time Magazine. Nancy Gibbs, Council on Foreign Relations, was a Managing Editor at Time Magazine and Henry Luce, the founding publisher of Time Magazine, was also a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. John Huey, Richard Stengel, Joe Klein, Ian Bremer, James Ganese, Jason McManus, and Henry Grunwald are all members of the Council on Foreign Relations. Arthur Hayes Salzberger was publisher of the New York Times from 1935 to 1961 and a CFR member. His son, Arthur Oakes Salzberger, member of the Council on Foreign Relations, became publisher of the New York Times in 1963. Joseph Kahn, Council on Foreign Relations, currently serves as managing editor of the New York Times. Andrew Mark Rosenthal, Council on Foreign Relations, is former editorial page editor of the New York Times. Serge Schemann, Susan Chira, David Unger, David Sanger, Thomas Schenker, Thomas Friedman, Ethan Bronner, Andrew Sorkin, Corin Gokmano, Michael Gordon, Robert Semple, Judith Miller, David Brooks, and Nikola Kristoff are all CFR members. Friedman is also a Bilderberg attendee and Brooks the Trilateral Commission. Council on Foreign Relations member Eugene Isaac Meyer was the publisher of the Washington Post newspaper and served as the chairman of the Federal Reserve from 1930 to 1933. Catherine Meyer Graham, Council on Foreign Relations and Bilderberg, led the Washington Post for more than two decades. Donald Edward Graham, Bilderberg and Trilateral Commission, was a publisher of the Washington Post. And then, of course, Jeffrey Bezos, Bilderberg Group attendee, the CEO of the Washington Post and Amazon.com, with an estimated net worth upwards of $112 billion. Fred Hyatt, Glenn Kessler, Ann Applebaum, Walter Pincus, and Jackson Deal were all members of the Council on Foreign Relations. Charles Kradhammer, who you also see on Fox News, attends Bilderberg Group and the CFR. Robert Kaiser, CFR. David Ignitus, CFR and Trilateral. Eugene Robinson, Karen DeYoung, Mark Thyssen and Richard Cohen, the CFR, Jim Hoglin, the Bilderberg Group and the CFR, and George Will, CFR 
and the Trilateral Commission. Wyatt Thomas Johnson, Council on Foreign Relations and Trilateral Commission, served as president of CNN. Walter Isaacson, CFR and Trilateral Commission, worked as the CEO of CNN. Alana Lee, CFR member, is the senior VP for CNN International. Mark Whitaker, Council on Foreign Relations, worked as the executive vice president and managing editor for CNN Worldwide from 2011 to 2013. Fareed Sakari, David Gergen, Judy Woodruff, Peter Bergen, Kitty Pilgrim, Paula Zahn, Elise Labor, Ali Velshi, Jake Tapper, Sam Feiss, Jeffrey Tobin, Erin Burnett, and Sunday Gupta are all members of the Council on Foreign Relations. Zakari is a CFR director and trilateral commission attendee, and David Jurgen is also a trilateral attendee. Christiane Amanpour is married to a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. Lawrence Allen Tisch, Council on Foreign Relations, was the CEO of CBS from 1986 to 1995. William Samuel Paley, Council on Foreign Relations, was a chief executive who built CBS News. Joseph Anthony Calfano Jr., Council on Foreign Relations, is a director of the CBS Corporation. William Cohen, Council on Foreign Relations, is also a CBS director. Dan Rather, Bob Schieffer, Charlie Rose, Leslie Stahl, Marguerite Brennan, Rena Neenan, and Edward Murrow are all CFR members. Charlie Rose also attended the Bilderberg Group. Jeffrey Lawrence Bach has been the CEO of Time Warner since January 2008, the president since 2005, and the chairman of the board since 2009. He is a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. Gary Ginsberg, also a member of the CFR, joined Time Warner after spending 11 years at News Corporation. Richard Dean Parsons, Council on Foreign Relations, is the former chairman of Citigroup and the former chairman and CEO of Time Warner. And Gerald Levine, another prominent member of Time Warner, is also a member of the Council on Foreign Relations and the Trilateral Commission. Together, their reach includes Warner Brothers, HBO, TBS, DC, and the Cartoon Network. Benjamin Berkeley Sherwood, Council on Foreign Relations, serves as the co-chairman of Disney Media Networks and the president of Disney ABC Television Group. Sherwood is the former president of ABC News. David Weston, Council on Foreign Relations, was president of ABC News. George Stephanopoulos, Juju Chang, Barbara Walters, Katie Couric, Diane Sawyer, and Jonathan Carl are all members of the Council on Foreign Relations. Diane Sawyer is a CFR director, and Peter Jennings, before his death, was a member of the Trilateral Commission. Michael Eisner is a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. He was the chairman and chief executive officer of Walt Disney Company from 1984 until 2005. Monica Lozano has been on the board of directors of the Walt Disney Company since 2000. She was named an independent director of the Bank of America in 2006. Their influence has reached over Disney, ESPN, Pixar, Marvel, Lucasfilms, and Vice. David Remnick is a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. He has been editor of New Yorker magazine since 1998. Amy Sorkin, Council on Foreign Relations, is also an editor at the New Yorker magazine. Hendrik Hertzberg, Lawrence Wright, Evan Osnos, Jane Kramer, Mark Donner, Nick Palmgarden, Matthias Schwartz, Robin Wright, Robert Silbers, and Barbara Epstein are all members of the Council on Foreign Relations. Silbers and Epstein work as editors at the New York Review of Books. Richard Mills Smith, Council on Foreign Relations, is the editor-in-chief, CEO, and chairman of the Newsweek magazine. John Ellis Meacham, CFR, is the former editor-in-chief of Newsweek. 
Janine Giovanni and Evan Thomas both work for Newsweek and are members of the Council on Foreign Relations. Tina Brown, Council on Foreign Relations, is a founding editor at the Daily Beast. Barry Diller, Council on Foreign Relations, works for the Daily Beast. And Joanne Lippmann and David Edelman, both CFR members, have worked for USA Today. Donald Bohr is a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. He serves as the chairman of the PBS board. Hartford Gunn, a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, was the founder of PBS. Jim Lair, Margaret Warner, Bill Myers, and Jonathan Barzelli were all members of the Council on Foreign Relations. Warner and Myers were directors of the CFR. Vivian Schiller, CFR, is the former president and CEO of NPR. She is also the former head of news and journalism partnership at Twitter. Gary Evan Nell, Council on Foreign Relations, was the president and CEO of NPR from 2011 to 2013. Tom Jelton, Council on Foreign Relations, is the religion and belief correspondent for National Public Radio. Eric Schmidt is a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, Bilderberg Group, and Trilateral Commission. He worked as the executive chairman of Google and Alphabet Inc. until 2017 when he abruptly resigned. His net worth is estimated to be above $11 billion. Cheryl Sandberg, Council on Foreign Relations, is the Chief Operating Officer of Facebook. Her estimated net worth, above $1 billion. Marne Lynn Levine, Trilateral Commission, is the Chief Operating Officer for Instagram. And David G. Bradley, Director at the CFR, and Trilateral Commission attendee, is the owner of Atlantic Media, which owns and operates several prominent media companies, including The Atlantic, National Journal, The Hotline, Quartz, and Government Executive. The Council on Foreign Relations is the central hub for the American Deep State and Military Industrial Complex. Look how interwoven the Council on Foreign Relations is with the big media corporations in the United States of America. How many media moguls, on-air reporters, journalists, are members of, propagandists for the Council on Foreign Relations? Is it any wonder why the mainstream media seems to always support the next American war? How many members of the media attend conferences at the Bilderberg Group? The mainstream media wouldn't even admit the Bilderberg Group existed for decades as they were attending the meetings themselves. This is why we see the calls for censorship of fake news, censorship of hate speech, because the mainstream media, the Council on Foreign Relations, the deep state and military industrial complex have lost their monopoly over the control of news, over the control of information. So their response is to call for the censorship of fake news, the censorship of hate speech, to prevent online citizen independent journalists from exposing the crimes of the deep state military industrial complex and the mainstream media. What will you do to fight back? I know what I'm doing and I hope what you do is support me. Give me the capital to fight back against the media industrial complex in the United States of America because it's tied in with the deep state and it's tied in with the military-industrial complex and endless war. For as little as $1 monthly, you could help empower me. Go to www.patreon.com slash FFRnews. Please follow my other social media. I don't know when YouTube's going to delete my account. 
I do upload these videos onto bitshoot.com under Tom FFR News. I'm Tom Anderson on Gab, Tom FFR News on Twitter, Tom FFR News on Minds, Tom Anderson on Facebook, FFR News on Facebook, Tom Anderson on Steemit. Please subscribe, please click the bell so you receive notifications from my videos, and please share this link to help wake people up to the propaganda of the mainstream media. All of that and we didn't even touch base on Operation Mockingbird. As my followers know, in the 1970s the CIA admitted that they paid out billions of dollars worth of today's money to journalists to push government propaganda. Thank you so much. Share this report.